Ahoy lads, Sam here, with another episode in my Hearts of Iron 4 Simple Guide. In this episode we're going to be going over creating armies, uh, assigning generals and field marshals, as well as troop movement, uh, manual movement, orders, front lines, anything that deals with basic troop movement, as well as a few shortcuts. What I've done here for this video is I loaded up a game as the German Reich and took the first focus oppose Hitler, so we're going to be using the Civil War to demonstrate some manual troop movement. All of our troops are <laughs> unassigned, so there's a couple different ways of selecting them. You can always just click one, you can click the little groups that are together. Um, when they're different types of divisions, you'll see them stacked uh, on top, whereas uh, one here is regular infantry and one here is mountaineer. Uh, the best way to select them is usually to do this uh, click and drag method. So you select everything that's in that area. Uh, when you have some troops selected, you can right click down here. Uh, you can also, let's say I wanted to add this one to that army, go ahead and add them there. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make two army groups. We're going to have army group north and army group south. I want this one to switch from Army Group South to Army Group North. So we're going to switch them like that. Let's go ahead and organize Army Group North here first. Make them a red color. You can click right up here uh, to change the uh, color or insignia. And then we'll make Army Group South blue. Something else you're going to want to do when you make these Army Groups is you're going to want to assign a general. In this case, we're going to be doing some attacking in the south, and I don't want to go over all of the general traits, but we're going to want a general with high attack. The only reason I'm not going to choose Rommel for this is because he has Reckless, and I would rather not waste more time if uh, Rommel is injured, because then you only receive half the benefits uh, from the general, and you can't use um, any special abilities from them either. So any of these generals down here will do. Uh, we'll go ahead and pick uh, pick this one right here. And then for Army Group North, they're just going to be defending. So we're going to go ahead and select a general that has a higher defense value. And uh, we'll just pick Heinz. Once you have your generals selected, uh, you can assign them to a field marshal. And you do that by selecting the army down here and then right-clicking next to them. And it creates another open portrait. We can take the second army group, army group south, and assign them to the same field marshal by right-clicking them after selecting that army. Now we can click here, and we can click to assign a field marshal, and all the field marshals will um, be at the top. You can promote a general to a field marshal, but they'll lose a rank, um, and they'll, their stats are temporarily debuffed. But we have two very capable field marshals to start off with. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and pick uh, this one here. As your generals and field marshals fight, they will earn um, they will earn experience, and they will uh, fill out these traits. And when you get certain traits, uh, you can assign upgraded traits to them as well. This field marshal has a trait we can assign to him, but we're not going to right now because we don't have any command power. The general here, we would be able to assign um, Panzer Expert or Combined Arms Expert, since they already start with Panzer Leader. Uh, same with Trickster, we could uh, give them Guerrilla Fighter. We can't give them Improvisation Expert, because as you see there in red, not all prerequisites are completed. And we need at least one terrain trait, which you earn over here. Okay, so we made the armies, minus this one. We'll go ahead and add that division. Now we have no no more divisions that are unassigned, but they don't actually have any orders. So what we can do there is when you select either the field marshal or the general, uh, in this case we're going to give orders to the general, you can give them an order and the most frequently used one you're going to have is a front line. So the front line mechanism is a little bit odd. Either you can just left click Oh, we have the field marshal selected. Either you can just 
left click and it'll fill out the entire border of that nation or that faction if you're at war with them. But we don't want to do that because we want this to be Army Group North and not cover the entire border. What you can also do then is go back to Frontline and you can right click and you just drag that down to wherever you want it to go. In this case we could drag it there and all these guys they no longer have that red exclamation point meaning they are assigned to this. We can see 16 divisions for uh, this army group. And we'll go ahead and do the same for our army group south. And now they have a front line in the south. Now as you saw earlier you can use a field marshal for this too. If you left click it will assign the divisions based on the size of the army just kinda generally picks the size and there we go. It has filled out the army group north and army group south. Now an alternative thing you can do is you can go for front line, you can shift left click and now it doesn't designate one army or the other it will just fill out the front line with everybody that field marshal commands. The general still will get XP and stuff like that. I generally only use this if I'm fighting on a very large front like between Germany and the Soviets. Otherwise I find it usually best to uh, select each army and, and use that general to its fullest capacity. So we'll go ahead redraw, redraw what we had done before and we have a front line. Fantastic. But they still don't really have any orders other than to go to this front line. So the next thing you either draw is an offensive line or spearhead. Most of the time you're going to be using offensive lines. And just like making front lines, the UI for doing this is a little bit odd. So you would think, ah, I want them to go here so I should just click. Well, left clicking actually doesn't do anything. What you want to do is right click and drag. It's kind of a weird mechanic. So what I'm going to do here is select Army Group North, the Red Army, and I'm going to eventually want them to push here. And that assigns all 16 divisions to, to this order. You can see that there. If they weren't assigned, just go through these wonderful buttons. We won't be going over all of them, but uh, you could then hit Division Assignment Mode and assign them to that order. If you wanted them off of that order, you just unassign divisions. Now nobody's assigned to any order. There we go. We're going to go ahead and set up the same thing in the south. So we click on Offensive Line, click right-click and drag, and there is our order. And uh, so that is how you set up a front line and an offensive line. Now, you'll see these little arrows over the generals, and that's how you actually activate the order. Because they're not going to push, even though we're at war, they're not going to execute this order unless we tell them to. And then you'll see this changes to this uh, arrow that is now pointing and animating. That means the order has been activated. And over here is how strongly they will execute that order. Cautious is going to mean, or carefully rather, is going to mean they're only going to move forward when it is very safe and they are very confident they will win the battle. Uh, balanced is what you're going to use most of the time. It means that it will generally push your troops when it makes sense and fill in gaps. But the, the, but the troops won't push so far forward to leave themselves exposed. Now, aggressively is going to mean that if your troops can attack and they have organization to do so, they're pretty much going to do it unless it is hopeless. If it is hopeless, they usually will not attack, but th they will attack when it is very unfavorable rather than hopeless. This is really good to use when you're trying to wear an enemy down, even if you're not going to win the battles, if you're going to exhaust them in some way, or you just want your divisions to move ahead, even if they expose themselves to more um, dangerous positions or, or positions that are harder to defend, like they get ahead of the rest of the front line, but you just want them to keep advancing anyway. So, there's a, another method for moving your troops. It's manual movement. So what you do is you select a division 
and you right click where you want it to go and that's going to tell it to move there in the shortest way possible through the terrain. So wherever I right click that's where they're going to go. It's going to take the shortest path through the terrain to there. But let's say I want it to go somewhere different than that. I don't want it to go this way to there. I want it to go through the north. So you can shift right click and you can keep doing that. You can keep holding shift and right click and tell it to do whatever you want wherever you want to go. It will execute in, in that order that you tell it to unless it runs out of organization. Some other handy things. When you're up here, let's say I want to select uh, all of my tanks. So I can double click here when I have the general selected and it will select all of the same division template type. And now we have our tanks selected. Let's say I want to move them only manually so then I can unassign them because we're going to use these tanks to uh, move and encircle the units in the south so we can win the Civil War. So we're going to go ahead and manually move them there. I right click to here and then we'll shift right click because I want them to go there immediately afterwards. We want our general in the south to start executing their plan right away. So we're going to go ahead and have them execute and I'm going to want them to aggressively execute. Where's our northern army? I kind of just want them to sit there. We're not going to be going over the Air Force in this episode, but I'm going to assign them anyway. I want you to focus on what we call microing or micromanaging, uh, micro troop movement, whatever you want to call it. We call it microing rather than macroing because this here is an AI plan. Microing is going to be where you tell the troops to do things on your own. They're still going to follow this order, but I'm going to start telling them to do some stuff on my own because I want to win this uh, civil war in the most uh, efficient way possible and the way the AI will execute their battle plans is not the most efficient. So let's go ahead and unpause and just follow along what I'm doing here. Uh, we get the event here that we're in a civil war. And I'll try not to go too fast. So we'll slow it down here. We've got our tanks and we're going to try to use these to cut off the army group south so they no longer receive supplies uh, from the capital and they will be easier to destroy and then we can take both of our armies and just push through the rest of Germany. And here's our tanks that we had. Our troops are executing the battle plans. except for Army Group North, who we have told not to execute the battle plan yet, just sit on the border. We won that battle there, and their divisions are going to have to retreat. And they can retreat into a couple different places, but they're not going to have much organization because they just retreated. But I want to fill in these gaps in the front line, so I'm going to borrow some troops that are um, that are fighting. H is the hold button. It means stop doing what you're doing. Uh, so I'm going to hit H and then I'm going to right click here and then I'm going to shift right click because I want them to fill in this gap in the front line. And I'm going to do the same with this person. So over here, over here, then over here. And we'll borrow one more H. One thing I should mention is you're going to see these bubbles and these bubbles indicate who is winning or losing a battle. When you hover over them it will give you an estimated amount of time that it will take for that battle to end. Now a lot of things can change this, especially the tactics that are ruled by the generals which will change in the battle, uh, reinforcement from other units, but we don't have time to explain all of that in this video. We're going to continue here. One of our tanks ran out of organization, so we're going to go ahead and let that uh, go ahead and receive some more organization before we attack again. And we're going to want to have them start pushing here to help close the encirclement. Ah, so here's another tactic that we can use. This unit here is trying to reinforce here in Nuremberg. But we can help prevent that or at least slow them down by doing something called pinning. 
because while they are defending, they will be unable to advance. When you attack from multiple sides, it increases the strength of your attack by a lot, but it does increase the combat width, meaning that more defenders can now defend against your attack. I'm going to go ahead and speed this up and speed run it until we go ahead and we have that encirclement secure. This isn't exactly the encirclement that I wanted, but it's still a decent encirclement. So what we're going to want to do here is start making sure that we can hold this. So I'm going to take these divisions here and assign them because now we have two blue armies. Uh, we may not necessarily want that, so we're, we're going to restructure this a little bit. So let's go ahead and assign some of these folks to our red army. Right here we can use the edit mode and right click, drag, so we can drag our, um, our army group south a little bit lower and change our army group north as well. We'll just continue doing that until about right there. Now let's say <clears throat> I want to change the assignment of more of these divisions. Let's say I grab a group, but I want to grab quickly half of them. This is only two, but it, it will do for an example. So I've got two divisions selected here. There's a shortcut called S, or right here, where you select half of the current divisions, and you can change the assignment on them um, however else you want. That's a really good shortcut. So let's say I have all these selected. I hit S, and then I want to assign them all to right here. So some were already assigned to there, but some were not and now they have been reassigned to here. Up here I can see only three divisions are assigned to this order. Another thing I want to go over is we have these two new divisions. Now normally I wouldn't recommend deploying divisions early, only in a desperate situation, but I'm going to use this as an example. So we go ahead and deploy these two new divisions, and we want them to go ahead and join up with, um, let's have them join up with Army Group South. If I assign them, it's going to automatically assign them to this, front line because this has the least divisions assigned that order. And if I unpause, they're going to start moving over there. Now you're going to see this railroad symbol. That means they are strategically uh, redeploying uh, versus this other one, which is not. So that's a great example. So this one's going to deploy to the front line faster, but it's not going to have much organization while it, while it does so. Over here is your strategic redeployment order. And when they strategically redeploy it, they lose 90% of their organization. Now, I'm not talking about organization in this video. I plan on covering a lot of those um, statuses like and uh, stats in the next video. But it will move faster because it's going to use the infrastructure and rail lines to uh, redeploy more quickly, whereas this one is not, um, where, but it will keep its organization. However, I really just want them to get to the position as fast as possible. So we're going to go ahead and strategically redeploy that one. Now you're going to see it has the railroad symbol and it's going to redeploy faster. And we've been using that manual movement to go ahead and cut off these troops and we will destroy them. They're going to get weaker and weaker as they receive no supplies from their capital. So they will become easier and easier to defeat. Uh, again, we'll be talking about stats in the next video, but I can see here the strength of these divisions is low, which is that uh, yellow meter, which means they're running low on supplies.
when you uh, do get an encirclement, it's good to secure it by having multiple defenders. And here I'm being pretty aggressive because I'm pretty sure the AI isn't going to counterattack me. But normally you'd want to have some people just sit here and defend and not attack so aggressively. Otherwise, you leave yourself vulnerable to a counterattack. So at this moment, I'm going to again change our um, our structure here. So we're going to go ahead and you know what? We don't need to change the structure. This is a good time for me to use a different order. So we're going to go ahead and delete this order. We're going to take these unassigned divisions, which we can see here with the red exclamation point, and everything except for the tanks. I'm going to hold shift and select them all. And then we're going to create a fallback line. And a fallback line is like a front line, except you can't assign an order to it for an offensive line. And then we're going to hit H, so they stop doing what they're doing. And now they're just going to sit on that fallback line. We're going to go ahead and add these two to that order as well. And when we unpause, they're going to structure themselves in a defensive position for that line. Moving over a river here is going to take longer, but it's good that these troops are going to move in here because they were trying to cut off my one division down there. And even though we're not winning all of these battles, it's fine because we're training them of supplies and they're not being resupplied by their capital. And here we can change this order since we don't need to defend that position right now. Usually you'll use front lines, but where I recommend using fallback lines is having a second defensive line, especially behind a river, is a good idea. Uh, choke points, like over these crossings, like in Istanbul or Crimea. Or when you're playing the Soviets, having that good fallback line behind a river, using it to uh, hold strategic uh, positions like sometimes the AI's garrison order which we will talk about isn't the best for guarding coastline a lot of the time it is but sometimes it's just not going to work uh, in the way that you want it to now when we select garrison it's going to warn us that um, it will remove our current order so we're going to use the army group north for this but that's okay we'll just redraw this line and when you go to garrison you get all these options so you can guard victory points, naval bases, coastline, air bases, forts, and railways. But let's say I just want to guard the coastline, but I also want to guard the naval bases. And I can deselect all of those other options, and I can start clicking right here. And then they will go guard the coastline and the ports. But we don't want to do that right now. So let's go back to a front line our wonderful warning message again. We can see our fallback line, so we need it to go from there all the way to the top, reassign our offensive line, right click and drag, and done. We'll go ahead and just clean up what's left here in the south, and then I will show you one last thing for this video. So now that we've won that battle in the south, the rest of our divisions are going to automatically assign to this order that we have set for them here. So we're going to go ahead and adjust it, but we don't want to adjust it too fast because some of these divisions have to move. So we'll go ahead and let them move into place. We're not going to strategically redeploy them because they don't have that far to go, and them keeping the organization is more valuable. As they start to move into position here, we'll go ahead and move our Red Army orders, our Army Group North orders back up further north. We'll go ahead and assign this infantry expert because that's a good trait for us to go ahead and add on to this general. Uh, we're losing a couple defensive zones, but that's okay. Um, even if we lose a little bit of ground, it's not going to be that big of a deal <clears throat> to reassign our air force to that region. Now this blue army just got here, 
So there's a couple of meters over here. There's a plan preparation bonus and there's an entrenchment bonus. When you attack, you lose your entrenchment bonus unless you use the probing attack uh, special ability. Um, when you have a plan preparation bonus, uh, you can see the bonuses that provides and as you attack it slowly goes down. But we don't really want to sit here and wait the amount of time that it's going to take to build that up so we can use a staff office plan which will work when all the troops are in position as they are now. And when we do that it's going to increase our planning speed by 400 percent. So we're only going to need a couple of days of planning. And now that we have that, we're going to go ahead and have our blue army attack and our red army attack as well, since they've been sitting there. I'm going to manually do some movement here. So we're going to have the tanks attack here. I'm going to select these five. We're going to hit that wonderful S key and have half of them go here. And the two that weren't moving, we're going to have them go there. And then we're just going to let the AI do the rest of it. From there, you're going to win the Civil War. But I just wanted to highlight those uh, special abilities which come... Uh, above the battle plants. That's going to do it for this video. In the next video I'm going to go over uh, different stats like reinforce rate and um, organization, attack, defense, piercing, many different things. I don't know if we'll get through them all but I'll try and get through as many as possible in the next video. Have a good one lads.